So I'm not starting exactly from scratch, but I'm going to go through how you could simply create this anyway. This is the floor base, and that could be done by creating a simple rectangle. So knowing the sort of size, it's just a base to work off. And then you can use the push-pull command and move it up, say 100, and then hit enter. And that creates 100 mil high. And then you can triple click on this, and then you could right click and make a group out of that. So that's then a floor base. If you want to rotate it, because it's a group, then you can use the move tool, that's M on the keyboard, and just click on one of these four red squares that appears, and then rotate through 90 degrees. And again, if you look at the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the angles changing as I rotate. Okay, it tends to snap to one of those sort of 90, 180, or anything that's parallel to the axes. This thing, this is the existing sort of profile of the um, uh, walls that the wardrobe is going to sit into. The wardrobe is going to sit into this area. And so it's got a little recess into there. And again, if I go back to the other drawing, what I have done to get that quite quickly was to select this section cut, right click and create group from slice. It's a fantastic little feature. So right click create group from slice that creates a group of that and then I can control C or control X just to cut it out of this and I'll just bring it in to this and control V so that would bring in that group from the slice so again this is a vector format this could go into a CAD package or something else and it's all generated from the model I've got the section through the uh, uprights and the backboard and then this is the MDF, the MDF shelf unit but this is kind of showing me the profile of that now if I didn't have that option and obviously I wouldn't if I hadn't drawn it already then based on the existing dimensions and using the tape measure tool if I had this base already sort of created then I could just click on the edge of that make sure the little plus sign if I drag it along you can see it there's a little plus sign with some dots next to it. That means that um, it's going to create sort of guidelines. As long as I click on an edge, try not to hit the midpoint or the end point because it will try to give you a dimension. And the last thing you want is these dimension lines all over the place. So click on an edge and it drags out these dimension lines. Sometimes that little dot on the lines disappears like that. So that means that the tool isn't going to create a construction line anymore so just make sure you tap the control key if there's no plus sign outside the tape measure and then that will give you the option for creating a grid line so create one there then you would work out from the plan what the next one was enter another value so whatever this one was and then from this front edge you could put that one in from the front edge again because I've clicked on that point it's trying to give me a dimension which I don't want so again be careful about where you click it doesn't matter where you click as long as you sort of hover over the surface it'll hold it into that plane and so I'm starting to build up the shape of this thing and I can click from any one of these and once you've kind of got the general sort of outline you can then use the rectangle tool and just quickly sort of form a rectangle there form a rectangle there from a rectangle to there and a rectangle to there and then you just delete the sort of bits that you don't want so that 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 and that are gone this bit's gone that bit's gone and before you know it you've created that profile okay so that's kind of a very simple way of doing that but because I had the previous one I just brought this one in so I'm just deleting my guidelines I could have gone up to uh, view and guides and untick those that would have hidden those guidelines as well or edit delete guides as well this one deletes all the guides so I now know that the height from the plans I was given for this is 2425 so as this has come in as a group I'll need to edit this before I can push pull it so either right click edit group or double click it and that allows me to then push pull this up. So I'll just click on that. And I can't push pull it because it's just a profile. So if I want to turn this into a solid thing, if I just click and draw a line across one point, now it hasn't actually closed off. So this is interesting. 
So a very good reason why you should always draw your own geometry. There's something not quite right with this. So this is worth exploring because it might happen. So I'm going to click and drag from there to there to see whether this closes. That's closed. This has as well. So now for some reason these have closed up. Now I can select this line and delete that. And then I should have a fully formed profile. So now I can hit the push pull tool. That's P on the keyboard. It's this one here. And then pull this up. Two, four, two, five, enter, and that's taken me up to the underside of this. Okay, so this is basically the zone in which my wardrobe is going to sit. It's also there's a lid on it, so the ceiling comes in at this point. So if I just click away from this and then draw a, another rectangle from this point to this point, pull this up, say, I don't know, 50 mil then this is just representing my ceiling. I'll pull that out a bit. Pull that out there. And pull this out to this point. Sometimes you have to pull it twice. It might hit an edge and say, I'm not going to go any further. And you have to sort of kind of give it another pull along. So that's basically what we've got. Because uh, it's a sin to have unconstrained geometry or ungrouped or componented geometry, I'm going to make sure that this is triple clicked. I right click and just make a group of this. I don't need necessarily to make components out of these things because they are just kind of one off things which I don't necessarily think I'll need again. This is just to make sure that the geometry doesn't stick to each other and gives me better flexibility with the model. So this is the basic existing shell. Um, when we come back I will show you how to set up our layers so we can put this onto an existing layer and we can set our style to make sure that we color by layer. Notice that we've already got an existing layer come in. This has appeared because I brought in this cut slice which was on this drawing on the um, existing layer was selected. So that's why that appeared in there. But I'll select this and delete it and because there are contents on it it's going to ask me to remove the layer, move the contents to the default layer. I'll say OK to that. So all this stuff now lives on the layer zero. OK.